With the S Theory recently completing a $10,000 taxi journey, I thought I'd recount some of the longest journeys I've ever had in my taxi. Let's get started. It's worth remembering that every one of these jobs has its own individual set of circumstances. For instance, if the tubes and trains are down and the coaches and buses are oversubscribed for people trying to get to the airport, then spending £100 to get your family of four to the airport is comparatively cheap rather than missing your flight. So to start things off, I wanna share with what I would call a jammy job, you know, just a job that's like across town that might lead you straight onto another job. I find these far more fun and enthralling than just doing a really long job out of town. I mean, roaders are fun and they're quite easy to sort of like share with people, but depending on the circumstances, they might not be that good for me either. One of my most jammiest ones from years ago it was about 10 o'clock at night, I picked up on Loughborough Road. And if you know the road, it runs between Brixton Road and Loughborough Junction Station. So I probably dropped off in Dulwich, somewhere like that. A lady came running out of a residential or premises or something there, and she wanted to go to Tufnell Park. I'm like, yes. I mean, what's amazing about this is a couple of things. Firstly, it's the time of day. So it's 10 p.m., you know, there's nothing really on Loughborough Road. It's not like there was a pub or there was a premises or something where people were kicking out. So. That in itself was quite amazing. And the second bit is that I'm going all the way across the other side of town. Whenever you go down to somewhere like Dulwich, all I'm ever thinking about is, right, where's my next job going to come from? And in fact, anywhere in town, whenever you're out driving, you're always thinking, where's the next job? Where's the next job? Because the importance is not the job that you're on, but it's really how quick you can get back into the next job. So dropping down at Dulwich, realistically, the first place you know, 10 o'clock at night, you're gonna pick up again, it's gonna be Waterloo, West End kind of area, at least on the street anyway. That's probably one of my jammiest. I've had other ones on apps, right? I had one where I dropped down in Streatham, and as soon as I drop off, an app pops up and it's saying Streatham to Holloway Road. Obviously the app companies take their little bit, it's just the way it goes really. But every once in a while, you do get an organic jammy one just off the street like that. I also wanna caveat that these jobs come from almost six years of driving a taxi. I'm sure the longer I do this job, the more luck you get because at the end of the day, the job is all about luck. Also, I don't try and engineer these jobs anymore. So years ago, I used to think of the mindset of, oh, if I join this taxi rank late at night, once all the trains are stopped, I'll get a job in that direction. It generally doesn't work that way. I just work my hours. If I get a long job, so be it. If the Gatwick Express is down, I don't really care. I'm not gonna try and go there and get a job to Gatwick because it doesn't really benefit me. Another jammy one was at Heathrow. So I'd done my time in the feeder park. I eventually get sent, I think, to Terminal 3. And the people get in and they say, oh, can, you, can we go to Terminal 2? But can we go via the Heathrow Animal Reception Center? I had no idea where this was. Quick bit of the Google. It's sort of down near Terminal 4 direction. I'm like, yeah, sure, let's go there. Now, if you've watched my videos before, you'll know that Heathrow has the local system. And of course, the way the local system generally pans out is that someone gets in, wants to go to a nearby hotel, you drop them there, 15 pounds, you've then got to go back to any terminal of your choice, uh, generally empty. So it can be a little bit inefficient depending where you are. What was jammy about this one is that I'm getting paid to go to the animal reception center, pick up the animal, meat is still running whilst they're inside at the reception, get them back in, meat is still running of course, and then run back to a terminal. So I'm ready to just go back onto the job again. There is zero dead time. And that's just the kind of cabbie dream, really. It's removing that inefficiency between jobs. It's all well and good getting a long job out of town, but if you've then got a factor in time to come back into town, then those profits are instantly diminished. Then we have my first real roader. This one, I engineered a little bit. This is February 2018, and this is when we had all that real big snowfall, beast from the east or whatever it was called. What I did, I'd, I'd worked a day in town, so I'd already earned my day's money anyway, and at about 11 o'clock or so, I caught wind that a lot of trains from Liverpool Street had been cancelled, as were many other stations across London at the time. I lived out on that Liverpool Street line, I was out in Essex, so the thinking being is that you rank up there, you could maybe get a job going sort of in your direction, or at least partially some of the way home, and it almost paid off other than the fact that I went beyond my home. So gentleman comes up to the cab and he just said, look, can you do me a fixed price to Woodbridge? Now I know roughly where Woodbridge is, it's just outside of Ipswich. I thought, yeah, sweet, let's do it. I think I quoted him about 180 quid, which is obviously less than what the meter would do. And he instantly snapped at the opportunity. He was like, yeah, sweet, let's go. Um, so away we went. And I remember it being quite a long and excruciating drive because I'd already 
worked a day in town and then to go out there was you know quite long on top we're talking as well driving in snowy conditions there was a lot of snow in london there was a lot of snow on the way out there i'm of course driving a tx4 which is a, a rear wheel drive vehicle uh, surprisingly good in the snow but still requires a lot of concentration um, when you're on the snowy and possibly icy roads i eventually get him there and he actually gives me a nice tip on top of that as well um, as I think he thought it was pretty good value. The hilarious thing with that is that he actually told me he had to be in London the next day anyway, which was just, I don't know, it just seemed absurd. Why he couldn't stay in a hotel, who knows? What made that job awesome was like, not that I'd earned a day's money and then earned more money on top, was that I actually had a friend who was living in Ipswich at the time. So on the drive down, I gave them a call and said, hey, is it all up a crash at yours tonight? Yeah, sure thing. And I spent the next day just hanging out in Ipswich. I was like, this is pretty cool. It's just another element to roaders, right? Is that it could be the best job in the world for one driver and it could be the worst job for another driver. It sometimes feels a bit bizarre for people who don't really know the trade, but you're afraid to be turning down money, you know, for quite a long lucrative job like that. If you've been in an office, you know, for say 10 hours for the day and you're sort of already on your way home, there's probably nothing worse than someone saying, hey, do you want to go back in the office for like five more hours? You're like, no, I want bed. Doing long jobs in the taxi can be like that as well, depending where they are in your shift. Now, neatly mitigating the problem is the old wait and return job. So you get to drive pretty far out of town, wait for the person, and then go back into town. In terms of efficiency, it doesn't get any better than this. But my jammiest of jammiest would have been June of 2020. Obviously, you know the conditions, right? 2020 works pretty flat, it's pretty poor. I spent most of my time out in the cab just around the Sloan Square area. And because I was able to get some sort of local jobs, people just going to hospital appointments, maybe doing their daily shopping, stuff like that. But I had a lady who wanted to go to Egham. I'm like, yes, touch, you know, I had to sort of pretend and contain my excitement a little bit. She didn't want it fixed fare or anything like that. We just ran the meter, away we went. And then when I dropped her off, she paid the fare and she said, oh, actually, driver, I'm probably only going to be about a couple of hours. Would you mind, you know, hanging around for a bit and you can get yourself a return job back into town? I thought, yes. I mean, in normal circumstances, you'd probably weigh it up and be like, mm, I don't know, two hours. It might take me an hour to get back into town. I could be back to work uh, rather than waiting around. And of course, there's the possibility there might be a no show. Plans might change, right? But this was in 2020 when work was non-existent. I can't remember what the fare came to, it was about 80, 90 pounds, something like that. But that was a really good day's money back in 2020. You know, I had days where I went out and I only got like 50, 60 quid. It's the old saying of beggars can't be choosers. So I just chilled out in Egham for a couple of hours. Went to the local chippy, got me some fish and chips, just sat and chilled out, enjoyed life really. She contacted me a couple of hours later and away we went. I think I dropped her back around sort of Turks Row kind of way, somewhere Chelsea again, but ultimate touch. Airport runs. Airports are kind of like the most accepted roader, you know, like that us cab drivers do. I can still remember getting my very, very first Heathrow. I was super eager to work because I'd just got my badge. So going out on Boxing Day and experiencing what it might be like on the streets. And yeah, I remember ranking up on Harrods and I was super surprised when a family came up to me and said, driver, can you take us to Heathrow? Turns out they wanted a hotel just on the Bath Road. I think it came to about 60 quid, 65 pounds, something like that. Paid me cash. Awesome, what a feeling to be able to earn that in just such a short period of time. Obviously since then, I've had loads of Heathrow jobs. They just lapse out of the memory because it's just sort of almost kind of insignificant. With my pattern of work, with roughly starting around midday and finishing somewhere up to about midnight, um, I might get a Heathrow probably once every month, once every six weeks, something like that. When I first got out, I always assumed that if, to get a job to go into Heathrow Airport, you would just need to rank outside of hotels because everyone coming outside of a hotel it's likely going to be going to the airport. And I learned in my experience that couldn't have been further from the truth. The majority, I'd probably say about eight out of 10 Heathrow jobs I've ever done have always come from the street. And there's a couple of reasons for this. First off, the guys who do service the Heathrow shuttle runs, if you are a black cab driver, will generally pay the concierge a few quid for that privilege. Think of it like going through an app, right? For me to get an ultimate job coming through an app. Well, obviously I paid the app commission because they're providing me of work. And it's the same with the concierge of these hotels. They like to be greased up for that privilege. Just the way it works, obviously. Contacts, connections, there's nothing you can do about that. Secondly, the hotels will have their own cars. So even better for the hotels than using black cabs, if they use their own cars, they get a lot more profit out of it. I mean, I had 
um, a couple in the cab recently, they told me that they were charged £210 for the hotel to supply a car to take them from Heathrow to a central London hotel. I won't name the hotel, but they're very much overpriced. Whereas that journey in a cab is going to be about £80, £85, depending on whereabouts in London you might be. So the majority of them come off the street. And also for a lot of people, getting a job out to Heathrow isn't really that beneficial. You know, I'm lucky that I've got my little Heathrow tag, so that means I can go and join the rank if I get a job out there. But for drivers without that Heathrow tag, it means they've got to come all the way back into Central empty because they haven't got a tag to rank up there. So dead mileage, dead time coming back in, depending on the condition of the M4 as well. So not always the best or most lucrative job for some drivers. So other airports, I've done them all, but I've done South End once. And I just remember that being awful. That just took about two hours. It was just disgusting, possibly just because of general traffic that day. Gatwick, I've done about three times off the street. I don't really like that route either because that's like just the A22 all the way out there. So it's not as nice and flowing as say going out to Heathrow. Once you get out on the A4, you're generally away, but going down to Gatwick is a lot of like, excuse me, whatever. Luton I've done two, three times, very similar to running out to Gatwick, but you've got the M1 that makes it a bit easier. Stansted two or three times as well. Have a bit more of a bias towards Stansted because I used to live out near Stansted Way. And I remember once I came in on a Sunday morning and I'm coming down Bishopsgate. I hadn't done a job yet, probably about two o'clock Sunday afternoon. So I'm in town a little bit late and I see a big pile of people on the west side of Bishopsgate right by the coach stop. And I'm thinking, well, what's going on here? So I do a U-turn, I head straight back up Bishopsgate, bang, hand goes up. Driver, how much is it to Stansted Airport, please? Well, it turns out the Stansted Express was down. I say it's about 120 quid. And she goes, oh, that's a bit much. Do you mind if we grab a few more people and chuck them in the cab with us? I don't care. At the time I was driving a TX4, um, which obviously takes up to five people. I said, yeah, so long as we can safely get people and the cases inside, you know, load them on up. I don't care if you get more people. If anything, it's better for me because this individual people sharing the fare, so they're not gonna be glued to the meter or as resentful of the journey as much because they've got other people to share the fare with. And once I dropped them off, I don't know, probably would have been about three o'clock at that point, something like that, half three. I'm thinking, I'm not gonna get back into town. So I just went home. <laughs> And then of course there's City Airport. It's not as much of a roader, what you're talking sort of 40, 50 pounds or so. And then once you drop there, it depends on the condition of the rank. You know, as we've seen in one of my videos before, how long that rank can then dictate how quickly you can then get another job or whether you drive all the way back into Central. Those were some jobs starting out at the airport, but what about jobs starting at the airport? So then of course we move into the realm of airport jobs. Probably my best one off of Heathrow. I don't really work out at Heathrow a lot, so I don't have a lot to go by. I mean, it's either onto the other side of London, like East. So you're talking out like out Barking Way and then going West, Oxford, running that on the meter. And of course, finally, if we're talking about distance overall, we can look at fixed price work. I turned up to Heathrow on a Saturday, I think it was. And I was probably about eighth uh, on Terminal 3. And there was a job that was being knocked back by driver by driver. And I could see this lady coming up the, the queue. And eventually a driver came out and he said to me, he said, look, that lady there, she wants to go to Colchester, but she's only got 150 quid. I'm not really in the mood for a full day at work today. My brother lives near to Colchester. It's a weekend. So I take it and away we go. We're off driving to Colchester. That's probably what I would urge for many people who are doing far journey somewhere is just speak with the drivers because invariably there's always going to be a driver where it's going to be the best job in the world and there's going to be a driver where it's going to be the worst job in the world. Colchester worked perfectly for me because I had a bias to that area. I knew what was there. I knew that it could be a nice way of quickly earning a certain amount of money in a short period of time. You know, look at my circumstances now. I live out west. So if someone came to my cab and said, driver, can you take us down to Kent and it's late at night? I'd be like, no, there's nothing worse I could think of. But depending on the time of day, there's probably gonna be a driver who would bite your arm off for that job. Just have a word round, don't be afraid to have a bit of a knockback with drivers and just honestly state your intentions. I once picked up a gentleman near Waterloo. I unwound my side window and he pretty much like slumped onto the side uh, of the cab. He was drained. He just said to me in quite an honest and candid way, look driver, I've had a really crap day with all these train cancellations and strikes. I'm desperately trying to get to see my daughter. She lives out Dagenham Way. How much do you know would it roughly be? I don't want to get ripped off. I can't remember what the price was. I think it was like 50 quid, something like that. And I went for it. 
because at the end of the day, I knew he was going to be a very good passenger, very much deserving of it. I was going to round up my shift anyway. And what a great way to finish the shift, just dropping this gentleman off to go see his daughter. I think I got a nice extra tip out of it. We had a wonderful conversation along the way and I can still remember it to this day. But putting the meter aside, and if we're looking at absolute distance, here are some of my very best fixed fares. One lucrative job for me was a lady who was a viewer of the channel, but she was based overseas. She had one of her children who was studying at a university here and another child who was going to start at a university down in Kent. It was a case of taking the first child from Cambridge University, going to Heathrow Airport to pick up the sibling and then going from Heathrow Airport all the way down to Canterbury. <laughs> what a great day that was. And then following all of that, taking the other child back to Cambridge. Now, of course, just because of the sheer amount of time and mileage that went on here, it was going to be a fixed fare job. No one would ever want to run this on the meter, but certainly wins in terms of distance, I'm sure. Another lucrative gig I had was during COVID. It was a taxi logistics company who had a contract where they brought people who were on medical trials in and out of London. Now, of course, medical trials are very costly and expensive things. And ultimately, the data they're trying to extract is only as good as the participants actually turning up. And because they're participants coming from all around the UK, they wanted to ensure they had a high compliance rate. So they booked taxis. Now, of course, this is fixed fare, but I was able to go to jobs like Manchester, uh, Bury, I did Southampton, up Wales. I was all over the place. And what better timing than during the COVID-19 pandemic when there was hardly any work on the streets. The only downside was because of the nature of the trials, we didn't know necessarily when the person was going to finish. So I might have to be in the area near the medical facility uh, and wait there for about three, sometimes four hours before then getting a job up to Manchester, which could take four or five hours. Then of course, I've got to then drive home from that. So quite a lot of time and outlay but I'm forever thankful for it because it really helped me get through those really dark COVID months. If you've enjoyed this, then check out this video where I negotiate with a passenger about the ideal fixed fare going out to Epsom. That'll be over here.